All right, all, my stuff's just. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to clean up that dusty gaming computer. This is a decent cleaning. I ain't going to say it's a deep cleaning because I don't take the power supply out. I don't take the motherboard out. I also don't take the GPU port. I do clean it, but I don't take it apart. Now, this ain't really a deep cleaning, but it is a decent cleaning. Every six months or so, depending on the environment that you live in, how dusty the environment is, you should go in and change your, clean out your dust filters and blow the big dust out of it. Something like what I'm going to show you in today's video, I'd recommend every year, year and a half, do something like this. You know, just take the fans out, take the radiator out, clean them up good. If you ain't using an AIO or a water cool system, you're just using an air cooler, you know, you need to take your fan off and blow the fans, the fans out of your uh, heat sink out. Maybe get a cloth or something put back in there and try to clean them up the best that you can. Just try to keep them temperatures under control. Let me flip you over here and I'll show you how to get this dusty gaming PC cleaned up today. Alright y'all, and to be able to get this dusty gaming computer cleaned out here, there's a few tools that you're going to need. Basically to be able to take the computer apart, to be able to get into the tighter spots and whatnot. Not really necessary, but if you did a good cable management job, you'll need some side cuts to cut them zip ties that you used. You will need a number two magnetic tip, Phillips, to be able to uh, take the components out and whatnot. Me, if you've seen any of my other videos, I cheated a little bit. I do use a power screwdriver as well. And I also use an six inch extension bit that's also number two, that is also magnetized. All right, that's what you're gonna need to be able to take your components port. Basically, it's the same tools that you're gonna need when you build your computer. You know, you need to take some of the fans out, some of the radiators out, you know, depending on how good of a cleaning job you actually want to do when you game a computer. To actually clean it out, I have a data vac here. By using this, I don't have to worry about ESD being put into the machine when you blow out the dust. If you're doing this just every once in a while with one computer, I wouldn't recommend buying one of these. You could always just buy cans of compressed air to use. Uh, right here, we just got some uh, regular Clorox uh, disinfection wipes. That's basically just to be able to wipe down the case, the outside of the case and whatnot, get all your fingerprints and all that good happy stuff off of it. And we also have a roll of paper towels. That way, whenever you, after you get done using the cloth wipes, you can go back and wipe it down. You know, that way you don't get smear marks and all that on your case. You don't want that. And we also have some cheap Windex up here, or window cleaner, whatever you want to call it. And since we got this tempered glass side panel, you know, you definitely want to, want to clean that glass panel up get the fingerprints and the smudges and all that off of it so you'll need some glass cleaner for that and also depending on how detailed you want to get into it i also got some q-tips here that way you can get really get into them fans and whatnot or if you want to actually go in and take your motherboard out and clean up your motherboard them's also nice and for most of the cleaning in the tight spots instead of just using it just to clean the thermal paste off the cpu i also use uh rubbing alcohol you can use some kind of multi-cleaner or something like that if you want. I use alcohol because when it does dry, it does it does evaporate. You know, you don't have to worry about your components being wet or anything. If you get it on the motherboard or anything like that. So I will use this as well for cleaning, which it is rubbing alcohol. It does a very good job of cleaning the components. All right, guys, to get this dust out of the system, of course, you got to take the side panels and whatnot off. So we'll get started with that here. I'm going to take off the side panels, which your case may vary depending on how your case is set up but you want to take all the side panels off the front panel off if, if you can there we go Get that side panel off and we'll go around to the back here and see this is where the Clorox wipe comes into play there's a lot of scuff marks and dirt and dust on it which uh, I'll be doing the side panels right after I put it all back together once I get the rest of the machine cleaned up Okay, take that side panel off. And I don't know how well you can see that, but we do have quite a bit of dust back here. And back here on this side, we got quite a bit of dust down here in the bottom, uh, which hopefully a lot of this will come out with the, with the canned air or the uh, data back. And you can see, if you can see the dust down in here, I'm hoping you can see how dusty this actually is. That's within seven or eight months after I built the machine. Um, so you need to do this quite frequently. Now we'll go ahead and take the dust filter off the top. So I don't know if you can see how dusty that thing actually is or not. But it's actually got quite a bit of dust on it. 
We'll blow it out. That is the dust. You can see the dust on it where the fans have been. Um, we'll blow the dust out of that before we put it back on. Okay, gonna spin it around here to the front. I'll pop off the front panel here. Which that one ain't looking too bad. I'm sure it's got dust on it, but it ain't looking too bad. Well, down in here, you can really tell. The front, the front dust filter, which you can really tell on it how bad it actually is. I mean, you take your finger and rub across here, you can see how dusty it actually is up there. So that's all the dust and whatnot we need to get out of this machine. And we also have quite a bit of dust down here on the bottom. And if you're used to all-in-ones, you can see the dust pattern where the fans is behind the radiator. And then we're going to get all that out. Let's look at the top here since we took that dust filter off. Well, it's just pretty dusty, um, which my cat likes, enjoys laying on top of the, uh, on top of my machine. I think it's because of the heat or whatever, but she likes laying up there, so it, it does get pretty dirty. But you get a lot of fingerprints and whatnot using the front I.O. and the power button and all that, which we'll take care of the outside of the case and the side panels, like I said, towards the end when we're putting it back together. Um, I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but that fan's got quite a bit of dust built up on it. Maybe I'll try to get a better shot of that when I take it off. And depending on how much of a deep cleaning you want to do, guys, depends on you. Um, there's some people out there that take the GPU support and cleans down inside the fins and all them. Today we're going to do a pretty good cleaning, but not a real good cleaning. I'm going to blow all the big dust and stuff out of it. I'm going to take the radiator and the fans out, clean them up good. Take clean up the take GPU out. We're going to blow it, blow the dust and whatnot out of the fins a bit. But I'm not going to take it apart. Also, while I got the machine detached and we're in the mix of it, I normally don't do this. You really don't need to do this every time that you do cleaning on your PC, but I am going to be replacing my thermal paste. All right, all, before we uh, actually start taking this component support, start ripping parts out of, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the data back. Or you can use your can press there just to try to get most of the big dust out of it. And then once we get that done, then I'll start taking out the GPU. I'll take out my uh, capture cord. I'll take the fans out, the radiator out. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with that, uh, getting that big dust blowing out of the system. I would recommend doing this outside, but right now with the current state that I'm in, I'm unable to get the system outside, so I might have to do it here in the studio, which means my studio is gonna need cleaning afterwards. But it is what it is, right? Let's go ahead and get this big dust knocked out of here. <laughs> guys and the one thing I just noticed I forgot to take out was the power supply which it's pretty dusty and you know that's the filter that goes underneath the power supply it's pretty dusty we'll, we'll clean that up when we put it back together as well just like we will the rest of the outside components all right guys since we got the inside and the outside blown off pretty good let's take a look at the bottom I showed you taking that filter out and it's pretty bad down underneath here too um, like I said I do have a cat and I do have several dogs. So pet hair is an issue within my computer system. We're gonna go ahead and hit this and uh, get some of this big stuff blown off. All right, y'all. Now, since we got the dust cleaned out of it, pretty much, you know, I mean, I took care of a lot of the big dust, depending on how often you want to do it, depending on uh, what your clarification of clean is, you know. Which I'd recommend doing that every few months to it, uh, depending on the area you live in, how dusty your area is. Now, every six months or so, you need to just blow the dust out of, clean out your dust filters. You know, that's why them dust filters are there. You may be able to get away with a little bit longer. Like I said, depending on the area you live in, how dusty your environment is, or if you have pets or whatnot, it all plays a role in it. Um, but now, since we got most of the big dust blown out of it, I'm gonna go ahead and take the GPU out. I'm gonna take the capture cord out. We're going to take all the fans out, and we're going to be pulling the radiator out of this thing. Let's get to it and uh, start taking some of these components out of here.
Now, since we got most of the components out of it, this is about as far as I'm going to take it down. I'm not going to be removing the motherboard today. Some people do. Me, I think it's a little overkill for cleaning. But that's up to you. You know, some people say what I do here today is going to be overkill for cleaning, which I don't recommend doing this every six months. I usually do this once every year, year and a half. You know, every six months or so, I'll clean out my filters and blow the dust out of my fans and whatnot. And before we don't get the thermal paste all over everything, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna remove the thermal paste from the water block here and from the CPU itself. Uh, that way we can get some fresh thermal paste put on this thing once we get the uh, rest of these components cleaned out. All right, guys, now I've got that thermal paste cleaned off the water block here and we gotta clean it off the CPU. That way we don't have to worry about getting all over everything. Cause it, it does and can make a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my back again, my data back, and I'm gonna hit these radi hit the radiator again. I'm gonna hit the fans a little bit better with the put the data back. Just try to get some of that bigger dust out now since I got it all separated. Um, and then I'll go back and uh, then I'll use my Clorox wipes and then I'll wipe down the radiator. I'll wipe down the hoses, the water block. I'll wipe down the fans the best that I can here. And then we'll move on to the GPU and the uh, capture cord. Guess. Now since we got the fans and the radiator cleaned out pretty good, I think it'll be all right. 
I'm gonna go ahead and kind of spray out the capture core here a little bit. And we're gonna also spray the, get down in these fans the best we can with the blur, with the air. Um, just to try to get as much dust as we can out of them. Like I said, in today's video, I'm not gonna be taking the GPU report and actually cleaning it real good. But at least get the dust out of the fins and whatnot and try to get all the dust, all the big dust out of it. So uh, let me show you, show you uh, some footage of me doing that and I'll be back. Alright guys, now since we got the big dust and whatnot knocked off, I'm going to go ahead and get another cloth wipe here and just kind of wipe them down a little bit, you know, just to get the best that we can here. Ain't going, ain't going for a professional job here, but we like to get all the big dust off of it, right? Alright guys, I think them turned out pretty good. I think they look pretty clean. I think they did a pretty good job on them. There's them done. We got the radiators and the fans cleaned up pretty good. We got the GPU cleaned up pretty good. We got the caster core cleaned up pretty good. So uh, now I'm just gonna take some of the cloth wipes and I'm gonna wipe the rest of the case down inside. You know, whatever can be seen and as much as I can, as best as I can. Like I said, this is no real deep, deep clean, but it's a decent cleaning job, I believe. So let me go ahead and uh, show you some footage of me getting the rest of this wiped down with Clorox wipes.
I think that's pretty good cleaning one. Next thing would be to put the thermal face back on the CPU and uh, start putting them back together, I guess. So uh, let me show you some time lapse of uh, me putting the thermal paste on one and putting it all back together. And I'll be back. <laughs>
Alright y'all, and that's the way you give that dusty gaming computer a decent clean. Like I said, you know, I've said it while I was doing it, and I also said it in the intro, you know, you don't need to do this quite frequently, you know, every year, year and a half or so. I changed the thermal paste on mine, you don't have to do that. You know, it's just something that I wanted to do while I was in there. Plus, it also helped clean up the head unit and whatnot of the all-in-one that I use. You know, by taking it off there, it's easier to clean it up a little bit more. But changing out that, that thermal paste thing ain't required every time you clean your PC. And you notice whenever I was doing the fans or the graphics card, I was holding the fans in place while I sprayed them down with the uh, hand air or the data vac, whichever you may be using. You know, you want to hold them fans still. Even if they're connected or if they're not connected to the motherboard, you need to hold them fans still as much as possible. That way you don't wear out the bearings or you don't spin them too fast and wear out the bearings in your fans. Because you hate to clean it, give it a good clean like this and then put it together and your fans start making noises on you. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Just try to keep a finger on them uh, fans to stop them from spinning. If they spin a little bit, it ain't going to kill them. But, you know, you want to try to avoid that if possible by just holding them still and whatnot. If you enjoy this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. There's also a comment section below. I go through them every Saturday here on my live stream, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. If you really like this kind of content, maybe hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell where you're notified next time I put out a video or I go live here on YouTube. Also, there's links in the description for Instagram or Twitter. I don't care your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in to give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel or whatnot. Or if there's any news about my live stream, if I got to change it or cancel it or anything like that, where you also get them notifications. And with all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.